Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today we are going to start our Marcel dress from Mar um, Chalk and Notch Sew Along. Now I'm aiming this um, Sew Along at Total Beginners and hopefully I'm going to cover everything that you need to know. Um, if there's something I don't cover then please reach out to me in the comments below because I will answer your questions and I will help you further. Um, it's just that I'm trying to remember back to my days as a beginner sewer in order that I can include everything. And I've got a juxtaposition between including enough that I keep you interested and I can get you to where you get a finished garment that you love and not baffling you with all of the intricacies and, and sometimes complications of trying to do home sewing. So. In that, I'm trying to find that middle ground for you all so that you can have a um, have a really good go at making this dress and that you will end up with something that you absolutely love. Um, and so that, that's where I'm, I'm trying to aim things. I'm gonna split this um, sew along down into several different parts. I think I reckon there's going to be about six or seven. But then hopefully you, it's in bite-sized pieces because I think if I do one long video, then I think that people are going to get a little bit overwhelmed with it. And so I want to kind of give you bite-sized pieces so that we can work through it. So this video is going to be all about your preparation. It's going to be all about chatting about the pattern. And it's going to be everything that I hope that you need to know in order to then move forward with me on to the next stage um, and then and then each time we'll, we'll move on to the, the stage after that um, and and so yeah hopefully you're going to enjoy stitching along with me so first of all let's talk about the pattern because you're going to need a pattern in order to have a go at making the dress excuse this dog eared piece of paper it's been in my pattern stash so this is the Marcel dress by Chalk and Notch that we're going to be making today. And we've got three views, one, two and three. Now I'm going to be making the maxi dress today and I'm actually making it for my mum because she really liked my two dresses that I've made. And so that's what we're going to be making today. It does come in a shorter style and it also comes in a tank style as well. So you can have a look and see what you prefer to do. The construction of the band here, which is because I'm wearing this Marcel dress at the moment, or the band on it on, on the mannequin here, before you get to the gathers, is the really the only fitting that you need to do for that. And now we'll talk through how to do that in order to um, make sure that your dress is going to fit you. And we'll talk about taking measurements and we'll talk about fabric and we'll talk about your pattern and how to print that off in order that you can you can then follow along with me. And, and you may have already completed some of these stages already on your own while you've been waiting for this video, but I'm still going to cover it all because then you can tick, 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 make sure that you've got everything covered. Whilst you're watching this video, if you haven't already, this is the fabric I'm going to be using for making my dress today, um, pop your, your fabric into the washer and wash it and dry it however you will wash and dry the um, final garment. So for me, I put it on a 40 degree wash, so 40 or 30 is fine, and then I line dry it. And then what I'll do then is I will steam iron this on a, um, on a not on a too hot, because the, I mean, I'm using a viscose, but we'll get into all that later. But, but, but just wash and, wash and iron it and dry it exactly as you would do your finished garment, just so that you've got that ready, because obviously when we get a couple a video or so, it, two videos in probably before you need to use your actual fabric, by that stage it's giving you time to get it washed and dried and ready to use. So that was just that quick, quick one to say. So before we get into all the rest of it, I nearly got ahead of myself then, um, let's talk about actually the pattern itself. So the pattern itself is by a company called Chalk and Notch. And you'll need to go onto either their website or one of the other websites in sorry, my slaps, traps keep falling down because I'm sitting down. They do stay up when I'm sitting when I'm standing, obviously. Um, you'll need to have a copy of the pattern. Now the pattern does come in a paper copy and it also comes in a PDF copy. So depending on where you are in the world and what postage is like for you, you can either um, order it online or, or from the shop and then have it delivered to you, or you can then choose the PDF print at home version and you'll be able to then print that at home. And generally PDF um, patterns come in two formats. They come in a PDF which is on an A4 or letter size paper if you're in the United States. I'm not sure where in the world you'll be watching this from. But then also sometimes you can get big sheets of paper, AO size piece of paper, and you can have that printed at a copy shop. Now 
obviously that's a that's um more money for you to have it print so you're buying the pattern as a pdf and then you're having it printed out but it does save you time and effort in sticking it together because when you have your pages like this then you have to then have a, a floor or a work surface where you're going to join all of these patterns to get these pieces of paper together and you're going to sellotape them together now the pattern does come in size not not 30 that sounds like it shouldn't be quite right does it let me just hold on one second it comes in sizes it is size range not 30 so it, it actually would work for a teenager as well, probably at that size range. It's um, really, really tiny, isn't it? And also it's got two bust cups. So if you're a little bit fuller in the bust, then you can use the CD cup and you can use that one. And that's the one that I used on mine. Um, and I'm usually in... No, okay. So another little bit. If you are... When you're dressmaking, you need to ignore what shop sizes you are. So I don't care if you're a 12 or a 20 in a shop size, it doesn't matter. You have to ignore all of that and you need to go by the sizes that are on the actual paper pattern. So you have to just, just drop, drop that kind of allegiance, if you like, to a set size because especially if you're using the um, patterns like Vogue, McCall's, Butterick and Simplicity, their size ranges are really, really narrow. Um, so they're, they're, they're not very generous in their sizes. So, for example, in a, in a Vogue or a Simplicity or McCaws or Butterick pattern, then whilst I can take a size 14 to 16 in, in an independent pattern company like Cashmerette or like Chalk and Notch, I'm quite often into an 18 or a 20 in a, um, a pattern size, pay pattern size for those big four companies. Likewise, when you buy a pattern that is um, for a one of those big four companies, or or generally, um, not not ge not not um, geared at a plus size pattern, and this one isn't a plus size pattern, but the size ranges go up with going up to a size thirty, go up towards a plus size. Um, then you will also need to know that you are limited with those standard patterns with a B cup. So there's only, the pattern drafter only allows a two inch difference between something called your high bust, which is above where your breast tissue is, and your full bust, which is across your apex, basically in line with your nipples, but your full bust um, and, and your apex. So there's only two inches difference. So if you've got any different to that, then you will either have to alter that pattern or you need to choose a pattern in the first place that is for a CD cup or sometimes larger. So I know that you'll have heard me talk about my um, love of cashmerette patterns and they actually do go up into a, an EF and a GH cup as well. And those, those cup sizes aren't directly related to bra cup sizes either. So for example, I might be um, in an E bra size, but I might have to take the um, GH cup size on a pattern so you we really do have to work with the measurements that you've actually got and it doesn't matter this is one of those things where you just think just look at it as a number it doesn't matter how big or how small you think that number is all we're doing is using that as a reference point to pinpoint on the pattern what size we need to cut out in order to give us the best chance of success and and believe me you can you can measure out to 12 um, D, um, D cup if you wanted to on, on your pattern but I can guarantee that if you just choose that willy nilly and you don't check those actual finished measurements when you come to try that dress on it will be too small for you so it, it really, if you really want to have the best chance of success at dressmaking we really do we just have to move past allegiance to sizes and we need to go just into reality just for a minute or two and just compare those measurements you know i don't like thinking i might be bigger than i am in a dress size but again it's just it's just pinpointing it on the on that particular designer's page in order to move on and, and make a dress that you're really happy with as i've done with these two and as i want you to do as well so apologies for a bit of the lecture um i don't wish to offend anybody and i hope i've not switched anybody off before we've even got started um but it's it's just a really really important thing thing to say because it, otherwise you're just setting yourself up for, for um, disappointment before you've even started and, and spoiling some fabric which we never want to do so go along and choose your pattern 
You then need to print your pattern out, whether it's AO, whether it's on your PDF and you're sticking everything together. And there will be um, help online for how to put together a PDF pattern. I haven't covered that just here and now because that would be a whole new video, but at some stage I will do a skill builder and when I've got a new pattern to do. But mine's all printed out because I've used my um, pattern pieces before. So here's all mine. It was all oh, still the side tape shining, can't you? It is a hassle to do. So just sometimes have your patience with you because if you're thinking of printing out your pattern and then cell taping it together and then tracing your pattern off and then making it all in one day, you're asking yourself a lot. So what I, a lot of yourself, should I say. So what I tend to do is I will prep, do all my pattern, pattern prep. So I will choose my pattern, whatever it is, either print it off or have it delivered. And then I will then trace it off ready to go as one complete step so that's like the first step before i do anything else and i can do that while my fabric's being washed and dried then i'll then go on the next day using my traced pattern pieces to then actually cutting out my fabric and then i'll start to sew it so it, it is a multi-step um process but once you've actually done this pdf pattern and also the other thing i would say if you're printing out a pdf pattern i tend to ignore that what's called the layers on it so print out all of your sizes in one go so all of these different lines here is a different size depending on the width so we've got a center in this case a center back here and then this is the width depending on what size you are going right from zero right up to size 30. i always put it onto one pattern because you st even if you take those layers out, your printer will still print out th the full number of sheets of paper generally. And then you've always then got this master copy. So if you want to make it for a friend, if you want to make it for a daughter and you want to make it for yourself, generally you may find your different sizes more often than not. And so if you've got that pattern printed out with all of the sizes on, all you need to do is take your tracing paper back to the master copy of your pattern trace out your new size and then you're ready to go again with your with your garment and the, and the one that you want to make so and that will speed the process up for you so that's another tip print out all of your sizes on the same thing because at any time i have printed it out thinking i'm not going to need this again you guessed it i do okay so print out your pattern i then trace cut the round these into individual pattern pieces just so that i could try and store it a little better because i do find that if you try to roll up your complete pattern once you've done all of your um pdf pattern pieces the um a4 sizes then it's storage of them can be a bit of a nightmare and so i folded it up and then i keep mine in freezer bags like this five litre one um, works amazingly well for me and then I write on it what it is and then I do some other information here so I do put down who it is chalk and notch Marcel dress I put down as well what seam allowance it is because your um, different pattern companies have different seam allowances when you're making it up so a seam allowance is the amount that you will have inside when you sew the two pieces together so when you sew the you put your two pieces of fabric right sides together to then stitch the bit that's left on the inside is your seam allowance and sometimes it could be 1.5 centimeters sometimes it's quarter of an inch and in this case it's one centimeter but we'll talk about more about that later but that's what i mark on here okay i'm going to take a breath and i'll be back so even before you buy your pattern there's a whole wealth of information both on the picture of the pattern if there's a picture of a model wearing the, the dress and she may or may she he may or may not be the size that you are that's not so important but there's so got a hiccup sorry there's so many tips that you can pick up from the pattern envelope um, and I'll pop a picture up here of the pattern envelope so we can just have a little look at that because for me I'm looking at where the straps where the straps lay so this is quite a wide um, shoulder for me and I think next time if I make one I'm just going to take half an inch to an inch out of the center front so my straps just sit slightly further in for me um, but again this is where we tweak the pattern as we're, we're making it but you can see that this band here fits very tight not tightly but very close to the chest and then the straps are going straight across and, and you can look on the back and see that the straps are not crossed they're just um, 
just straight at the back. But you can also see the fullness of the skirt on this pattern as well, if I just scroll down. Um, and so whenever I'm looking at choosing a pattern, I'm looking at how they've got that fitted on the model. Because if I want something super streamlined and super narrow, and it shows it as being quite voluminous on the model, then I know I'm gonna to have to adjust that pattern to however I want. With this dress, I just made it straight out of the pattern as it was, and it fits really, really well generally. So, I mean, I, I, strap slippage apart, but when I'm, as I say, when I'm standing up, it's not so bad. It's just because I'm sitting down and I'm a bit hunched and it's, it's just put an extra in there. Yours will be perfect, honestly, we'll get there, don't worry. So I look at that. The other thing that I look at as well is the what's called the line drawing of a pattern. So on this case, the line drawing of the pattern will show you where the seams are and it'll show you where there's any darts. Um, so darts are folds in the fabric that give you shaping. So if you think we're taking a flat piece of fabric and we're going to shape it into something 3D that's going to fit around a body, then we've got to you know, nip and tuck that fabric and, and manipulate it in order that it looks flattering with a, on, on a on a circular body. But when you look at the line drawing, you can then sit, and I'm looking down at my laptop, but I'll put a picture up here for you. You, you can see then where those seams are gonna fall. So it gives you some idea of the complexity of the pattern. And sometimes we think the less seams, the better, but in actual fact, the less seams, the less chance there is for fitting and for, for tweaking that fit as you go on. So if we think about a trapeze dress that kind of fits off your shoulders and then hangs and comes out quite triangular, then there's not a lot of room in there that should you wish to tweak that dress that you'll be able to. So line drawings are really important as well. So make sure you're happy with that. And if you find, see something in a shop that's ready to wear, that's, that's um, in a similar style to what you were thinking of, of wearing, try it on even if it's just to get an idea of length, because I've made this dress in a in the shorter length, the mini dress, and I didn't like it on me at all. For some reason, the, the volume on me made me look very square, whereas the, the length of the, and the flow of the maxi dress just makes me look a little bit more um, oblong rather than square. Um, yeah, so it's a longer rectangle sort of thing. So I was happier with that. So that's why I've gone back to the um, the maxi dress for, for this one because I made one in between these two um, and didn't like it. And, and I did, it was in a double gauze and for some reason it was just a little bit stiffer. But anyway, I'm digressing. So line drawings, because we're talking about patterns generally, aren't we? That's really important too. So have a look at, you, have a look at your model wearing the dress because that'll suggest how the designer wants it to fit on the body. And you can then choose whether you either size down or take a little bit of seam, extra seam allowance and adjust it in the future, depending on what your sizing is. So that's really important. The line drawing will show you the complexity of the pattern and how it all comes together. And so that can give you a really good indication as well of how comfortable you might feel making that dress. And if you've tried something on similar, you've already got an idea of whether or not that that style of dress suits you or not and, and you're comfortable in it and you like the dimensions and the proportions of it. Okay, let's talk about fabric. The Marcel dress is designed for a woven fabric and by that we mean one that doesn't have any stretch in it. So when you're out shopping you will, for your fabric or online, you're looking for something that doesn't have any stretch to it at all. So by that you can just test it on your fabric when you're in the shop. Just give it a pull either this way or that way and just check that there's no give in that fabric. There is something called the bias on a fabric and you will get a little bit of stretch in on the bias, but that's when you're pulling the fabric diagonally to the way that it was made. So if we look at a piece of fabric here, which we've got for this one that we're going to be working with, we've got here this rough edge, but when we turn it over and go close to it, we can see there's a bound edge in there with some um, holes in it. And that's where they roll the fabric on um, big rollers with pins on them. And the fabric is stretched across and then the pins go through the fabric. And then that's where it feeds it without any creases in, the machines do, when they're, make, when they're printing the fabric, in order that they don't um, get any faults in the, in the printing process. But that's called a selvage edge and that's really important and we'll go into that later. But if you, you either want to be, I use north, south and east and west for mine, so either horizontal or vertically, whichever way you want to do it, and I know I just did that the wrong way, but you get the gist. 
if you pull your fabric with your with your cell across your selvage, so selvage to selvage, there's no stretch in that, and also lengthwise, there's no stretch in that. But if you go diagonally, you will get some stretch, and that's normal. But I don't want you to get confused. So so long as you look for that bound edge on the edge of your fabric, and you pull either in line with that or at right angles to that, so either. Um, vertically or horizontally at that, that will tell you whether a fabric has got stretch with it or not because sometimes depending on where you are then it's all mixed in together and you're never quite sure. But this pattern is designed for a firm woven fabric with no stretch in it at all um, and that's mainly because of this band here, you don't want this stretching out of shape when you're wearing it, you want it to sit nice and flat um, and you want it to um, be the frame from which the rest of the dress hangs. The other thing that they talk about in the pattern as well is drape. So drape is just how a fabric moves. It's kind of, if you think about, if you put um, fabric over a coat hanger, is it gonna stay stiff like that or is it gonna drop down? And that's basically what it is. And there's different degrees of drape depending on the thickness and the structure of the fabric. So this one is a viscose and hopefully you can see that's really nice. It's gonna blow nicely in the wind um, it's going to walk nicely as you're walking down the street. It's going to swoosh as well with you, which is all lovely. Um, and that's going to be really nice. But this viscose, which is a natural fibre, is different to the viscose of the dress that I'm wearing. Because this one is even softer, even more of a drape than this one has. So when I hold them up, can you see how that one just hangs? Oh, it's caught on my legs. But how that one hangs much flatter than that one does. And then if we look at this dress here, look how stiff this dress is. So the fabric on this dress is probably the maximum I would go to for this one. It's nice to wear, but it is a little on the stiffer side, so it keeps its shape more. It's more of a triangular shape, this dress is, than this one is, because this one's got more, this fabric has got more drape to it. So it just um, folds nicer and just hangs a little bit not more nicely. So as you can see, the difference between that one and the difference between that one when I'm just scrunching it up in my hands. Can you see how this one is just that little bit stiffer? So again, you're trying to choose something that's got a softness to it, because if you've got something too stiff, it's just gonna be like cardboard, and it's gonna be difficult to work with, and it's gonna give you that really triangular shape. But if you've got something that's a little bit more fluid, then it's going to skim your body, and it's going to then move with the wind and just get blown nicely and look really nice and feminine. So that's fabric. So. You can also ask in, your sh in the shop as well. They say it's for light to medium weight, fa um, white, light to medium weight fabrics. So again, you're looking for something that's not too heavy. A linen would look nice in this dress as well. That's another fabric that you could use for this. I wouldn't go to a cotton poplin. I think this is more towards a cotton poplin. It's not quite, but cotton poplin is a little bit stiffer than that, um, and it's that's not going to gather quite so nicely. It's going to want to to stick out. So there's a few things to think about before you actually start to make your garment yourself. That, and I know that's, that's the, the thing to grab a cup of coffee and, and, and to, to listen to while I'm, I'm talking about it and while you're thinking about whether this dress is right for you. Um, but we're going to talk about taking the measurements next so that we can then talk about choosing size. And um, we'll talk about tracing the pattern off as well and how you just, just follow your lines with that because that can be a little bit confusing. And then I'll call it quits on this one. So this is this is the cup of coffee version, basically, isn't it? The, the prep and the talking about whatever else, whatever steps we need to take. And then we'll actually get into making, we're going to make a, a, a twirl band for here. So you can check the fit first before we actually go ahead and cut into our precious fabric. And then we're going to then move on then to making, cutting that, folding our fabric, ready for cutting that out. Because I've got a bit of a way to save a bit of fabric on there. Um, and we're going to work through through all of that. So... Let me get grab my tape measure and we'll work on, move on to measurements. So, as I've already said, and I'm not going to repeat myself because I know that I was went on a bit long about that before, we need to take accurate measurements in order to get an accurate result. It doesn't matter what the amounts are, just make a note of them and then you'll use those in order to choose your size. So, when we're taking our measurements, we need a flexible tape measure. Hopefully you've got one of those in your... Um, sewing box and then I'll show you with the help of my handy assistant just here which two measurements well there's three measurements because height is one of them that we'll talk about but the two measurements you mainly need for for making this dress because the button pattern the band of the dress fits across the central bit section here we need to take a measurement called the upper bust 
And I want you to pay attention to the upper bust because that's a really, really important measurement now in sewing. It didn't used to be, it always used to be before, take it across the um, fullest part of your bust and you just use that. But now in dressmaking, we use the upper bust measurement above your breast tissue almost all the time because that will tell you how to fit your shoulders and your shoulders may be a different size to your bust because of course now with independent pattern companies we've got different cup sizes with the bust and so that's really important then to to know and to use so we'll do i'll do a skill builder at some stage about upper bust but for now just trust me that's one of the measurements that we need so you're going to take your tape measure you're going to pass it around your yourself or your model and you're going to pass it around the back pretty much where your bra strap goes but then you're going to lift the tape measure up over the top and you're going to come over the top of your of your model so can you see that angle so you're coming round where your bust bra line is and then you're coming over the top of your bust like that and we're going to take a measurement so my dolly here is just over it's 35 and a quarter inches and that's 18, 18, nine and a half centimetres. So just make a note of that. Okay, I have on my piece of paper. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're then going to leave the tape measure around the back where it is where the bra strap is. And you're now going to go over the fr front of your body at the fullest part. It's generally where, where, where your bra kind of comes out. You want it to be on this fullest part just here. So again, let's measure that. So this one here is 37 inches. And that is, 37 inches is 94 centimetres. So if we take away the two measurements from each other, we can see we've got a five centimetre difference between the two measurements, okay? Why is that important? Remember when I said earlier about that Bra co um, pattern companies draft for a B cup generally. That was a two inch difference. So two inches is five centimeters. So if I was making the dress for my mannequin here, then I could use the AB cup and that would be fine because there's plenty of room in the front here because of all the gathers anyway. But if it's a difference bigger than five centimeters, then you're going to need to go up the cup size and you're going to choose your CD. So you might choose a size 20 and then you either choose an a b if i was making it for this model or if there was a five centimeter difference between the two measurements then i would make the c d measurement um, and again there's still plenty of room in here i mean i'm an ef cup on my bras and there's there's just so much room in here it's really comfy so that's really nice so you need those two measurements then to go to the size chart so let's get your size chart in front of you and we'll just show you what how we're going to determine what size to make for our dolly here and then you will then insert your measurements and have a look and see where we are with that so that you can choose your size that you're going to trace off. So get your size chart in front of you and then you're going to choose whether you're going to be working in centimetres or inches. I'm going to work in centimetres. So my high bust, well from Dolly's high bust, was 89 and a half and her full bust was 94 centimetres. So let's have a look at the size chart and see where we are. So we're going to size chart and body measurements. So on the high bust on centimetres, if I go across to the 89.5, there's one at 89, so we're going to stick with that. So that's a size 10 for that one. So let's just circle that one for the moment. And then we're going to look down. The next two lines are either full bust AB or full bust CD. So let's go down and have a look and see for the size 10 what size bust they've got. So we've either got a 94 for an AB or a 99 for a CD. So I know that because my, my um, dolly is 94 centimetres, then I would make the size 10 and I would make the size AB cup. And that should be right. So if you, if you fell between two different sizes, so say on the size 10, you um your high bust was say the 89 again but then you were a hundred or a hundred and one or a hundred and two 
you may need to just adjust the pattern just to give a bit more room on the front here on this front panel but we can talk about that when it comes to it when we talk about the pattern later and that's fine we can do that because this front panel we know from the line drawing runs all the way down the front of the dress so that's really easy to add some space in there which is another reason why I think this is a beginner pattern if you are smaller than the measurement that's given so if you are smaller than a 94 on a full bust I wouldn't worry too much because you're just going to lose that in the in the drape of the fabric so we don't, don't worry about that at this moment in time if you don't want too much of the gather here we can always lose some at the sides of the, of the center panel should we wish as we um, go through but again it's it's a loose voluminous dress so the, the main bit we're, we're interested in is this panel across the top here and as long as we've got that size chosen correctly according to how the, the designer wants to make it then all will be good okay so 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 have a look at your measurements and just see where you are on that size because it, that gives you your first size indication okay because we're just going to double check that next with something called the finished garment measurements and we're just going to double check that with that because that the difference between the size it's drafted for and the finished garment size will tell you something called ease and that's how much room the designer has um, allowed for or given you around this this dress and because there's no fastenings it's got to get on and over your top so it can't be skin skin tight but it's got to be tight enough that it's going to hold in place and hold your straps in place and what have you so the next table just below the size chart on on the picture I'm looking at and hopefully it's the same for you is that we've got the finished garment measurements so we know that we're suggesting a size 10 AB for our measurements for my model here. So now let's go down to the size 10 and let's go down. So where is on the high bust for choosing the measurement? It was an 89 centimetres. We can see the finished garment measurement for a size 10 high bust is 93 centimetres. So there's a four centimetre difference between what the designer has drafted so we can go back to ourselves up here now we've got our 89 there and we can go back up to the 93 and hold that against us and just see how that feels in terms can you see the extra extra room i've got here i can fit my hand through and you may or may not feel that that's too much ease for what you're wearing remember you've got to breathe though so you can't have it too tight because you have got to breathe um, and also you've got to move in the garment, reach your arms up and, and, and move yourself round. So you don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose either. We have got a seam, we know from the line drawing, we've got a seam here where we can tighten that up should we need to. And this is where the twirl is going to, to, to come into play. Because I would personally make my first twirl, and probably hopefully my only one, at the size suggested by the designer. So the designer has suggested this amount of ease for this, this band top. So this is the, the size that I would make at that point in time. So I'm happy that that's ease. If you find that the ease doesn't allow you to make your let your tape measure meet, you know you need to go up a size. So that's the other thing that you need to do. So just keep, you, you just need to bear that in mind. It isn't a, um, you don't have to go with the size that they've told you. This is what we're trying to work out, whether we're going to go down a size or come up. I do hope I'm not confusing you. I know it's difficult, but this is, this is all about any pattern. It's not just about the Marcel, but we're talking about the Marcel in this instance. So when you're doing your measurements and you're looking at your final garment, what you're looking at is whether you feel comfortable or not at first glance with that amount of room to move in your, in your finished dress. If we go up a size, we're going up to 96.5 on this particular model. So again, we can put our tape measure around. And if we go up to 96.5, I would say that's too much ease for this dress because that's almost going to fall down over your bust. And that's that's not really what you want. You don't want it to be gappy um, and and, and, um, and uh, yeah, and just flashing anything at anybody. And likewise, if we go down a size, we go down to 90 on the upper bust. And I would say that that's just too tight. You're just not hardly going to be able to have time to breathe. So the size 10 seems like it's a, a nice amount of ease on there. 
And if we go to the full bust for the AB cup on the size 10, for example, which is the one we're going to be making for our model, um, then it goes up to 122 centimetres. So again, put your tape measure around, pull it out to your 122 centimetres, and I can tell you, look how much room there is in that dress at that point. And you can see that on this dress because it just, just pulls across. So that's, I've got no problem at all with that. But if it was a fitted bodice, then again, you, the room over your bust would be really important to know too, because you need to know again how comfortable it is. And you do the same with waist and with hips, but with this dress being free, free flowing, it doesn't matter so much. So, just to, just to summarise, if it's possible for me to summarise, is when you're choosing your pattern, go by the measurements that the designer has said, and it will vary from designer to designer. So cashmere size chart will be different to chalk and notch, will be different to love notions, will be different to style arc, will be different to Vogue McCall's Butterick. So you need to just locate that chart and have a look on there, compare the measurements you've taken for yourself against the chart first to determine the base size that you think, then have a look at the finished garment measurements if they're there and more designers are putting those on now just to make sure that you're comfortable with the amount of ease that you've got movement and room for movement in that dress. <clears throat> Some people like lovely floaty dresses and other people like things a bit more structured um, and it just depends on your personal preference and nobody can tell you whether it's right or wrong it's just down to your personal preference. Okay we're moving through so we've talked about the pattern We've talked about the fabric, we've talked about choosing your size for your pattern and how to compare that to the um, pattern measurements that the designer has chosen. So the next thing then is you, then, you have printed out your pattern because you've printed out the whole pattern in one go as I've already said. And the next thing then is that we now need to trace off our pattern pieces from the paper pattern, from the actual master copy. I, as I said, I always keep the master copy to, in one piece because we can go back to that time and time again. We don't have to have any more paper costs, any more ink costs, no more time sellotaping it together each time. Just by using that tracing paper, then it just takes away all of that work in the, in the future. And also this paper, I mean, I've got a bit of a cheap um, photocopy paper here for mine, but if your pattern was printed on this, this is quite... Um, stiff and when you're working with a more fluid fabric then actually this can be a, um, a, um, a negative because the, fa the paper is just too stiff so I wouldn't I personally wouldn't cut out in this and then try and pin it onto my fabric and be able to feel that I've got all the creases out of the fabric when I'm pinning it on. Also you need to note that there's a different size chart so it's very common for designers to use a different style of line for the um, sizes, that's the word I wanted. So this is a size key and it shows you all the different sizes and all the different line styles for those different sizes. And you can see that I've made this in a size 16 before and I've circled that line because it does sometimes, sometimes when you're in the midst of um, getting your pattern together and doing it all, if you get a distraction from somebody in the family, a pet, somebody at the door, whatever, or you need to go to work, then if you remember which size you've done, and I've just circled it in pencil, so that I can identify and pick out which line I should be doing and I can keep going back and referring to that. The other thing you can do is highlight it. So if you have got a highlighter pen, you can highlight that with a colour and then when you go um, on to do your um, actual tracing, you can go through the pattern pieces first. So I was using this piece, wasn't I, as an example before. I should have chosen a smaller piece, shouldn't I? So I'm it the right way up. So here we've got all of our lines here and we're going to choose our line based, you can either count out 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and count out that way or you can find your line on the design from your line key on here and then you can highlight the line that you're drawing and then if you need to make it again in another size then you'd use a different colour highlighter pen and highlight the size you want at that time. So. Noting where your lines are is really important and I will turn the camera down just to show you how to 
trace the lines where they all start to merge because that does get a little bit confusing um, and I'll check my notes and make sure I'm not talking about something that I wanted to cover in another in another lesson. So the two pieces of paper that you need is you're going to need your um, line guide which is on this front piece and I tend to to, when you do, are doing your PDF patterns, print out your test square and check that that's right first because that's really important. So that should be two inches from line to line on your and both do both sides on it to make sure that that's exactly right in order to make sure that you've got the pattern printed out at the correct size. But it'll tell you all about that in how to print out a PDF um, online. And then we've got this pattern piece here, which has got all of these PDF, all of the lines on it here, where I've sellotaped it together, as you can see. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to look for the size 16. So we're looking for a line that has a dash and two dots, then a dash and two dots. So I've highlighted it as being this one. And then we can also check, because we can go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And so once I've done that, you can then start to colour in your line because this will then give you an idea of where you are going to be tracing. And it, it does work. And obviously you can then, you know, you mark on here that that's a, that line is the yellow line for the size 16. And you can then mark all of your lines down. Now, as we're coming down here, you'll see that we've got lines coming down, which I'm highlighting in yellow, but then we've got lines coming across. And there's some little notations here. So this is view C for the tank top. So if you are making view C the tank top, then you would be then tracing those lines off there, but we're not, we're doing the max address. So we will just carry straight on down all of these pieces and it'll just mark those lines. At the top here, hopefully you can see, we've got where all of the lines are all merging together. And what we need to do there is we will then go up to the top of our line for our size 16. The straight line across the size side here is for all of the sizes because that's starting across there. But then as you start to get across to this where it all sort of joins together, then I usually go towards the middle of where that is depending on the size that I'm using. So it just goes up slightly and then comes back down again. And that's where we have traced off. So this will, will then, once that's sort of highlighted in, can you see how much easier that is to see? So if you are a beginner, I would suggest going through and just copying off your line just so that you, before you trace it, so that you know where you are and where you're tracing to, because that will be easier to see. The other thing that you need to be aware of when you're making an outfit like this or a dress like this is something called notches. So in this pattern, they are designated by this little symbol just here, which is a little line. Let me just highlight one. So we're looking for that where those little symbols hit onto our line. So I'm not interested in all of these because these are all for different lines, for different sizes. And these are all for different sizes. But the ones where they, so if you go to the smallest size, we can see it's like a sideways T-shape, isn't it? So where that hits my size line, that's where I want to mark. So we've got a mark there. We come down, we've then got another mark here where it's hitting. And I will mark that in a different colour. And then as we follow our line down, I've got another one here which is on the sellotape, which doesn't help. And then I keep going down and we need those because these are called notches. Sometimes they're triangles as well. And the notches give us the clues when we're matching all of this jigsaw puzzle of fabric together at the end. And we'll talk about notches and I'll make sure we've, that we've got all of those when we're, we're marking, working with them. But again, we've got another notch just here as well. So again, I will mark that one with my coloured pen to make sure that we actually remember to include that one when we're making it. We've got some other symbols on our pattern pieces. Something called a centre back fold. So this has a little arrow that points to the, the line that it's referring to and it's got centre back fold on it. So that's a really important one, but we'll talk about that later. And then also grain line, that's important too. And that's usually one straight line that goes down your pattern piece and it has an arrow on each end. So where is your centre, your fold symbol points 
at an um, at a right angle to an um, this line here, your grain line just works up and down. So do make sure that you copy these symbols when you are tracing your pattern piece out and copy your grain line too. I don't if I'm making this for a my maxi dress, then I don't trace in all of the other views sizes at all. I just stick to my maxi dress because I'll trace off a separate pattern for that should I need it. When we come down to the bottom here, um, at most they've called it a midi dress, haven't they? I call it a maxi dress, but they've called it a midi dress. So again, you've got your lines here. So I would again copy this across. So size 16, two dots and a dash just to make sure I've got the right one. Copy it all the way across. And that will give you the extent with the right angle there. That will give the extent of where we've actually got to trace to. So it, we know when to stop and when to start. You don't need to write all of these words in. All I would do on this pattern piece is, oops, sorry about the noise, as I write on chalk and notch patterns. The fabric piece that it is, in this case, this is um, pattern piece number six. I'd put down Marcel dress. I wouldn't put tank top. And I'd put centre back panel and I'd put cut one on fold. And then seam allowance included is one centimetre, I'd include that. The only other thing I would do is because I'm tracing this off as a size 16, I would then write size 16 on here so that we've actually got that um, available to us then. So we know in the future what size this pattern is. So I'll turn this camera round again and we'll wrap up for now because this is where we're going to stop for this part um, of the session. I just recap what you need to actually do ready for the next session. So, phew, we've got to the end of, of the first session. I hope I've not confused you. If I have, put some notes down in the um, comments below and I, I'll put a comment in the comments below and I will pick it up and I will answer you and I will help you move forward. If you wanted to as well, there's also my Facebook group which is called the Sewing by Claire and that's all one word. Um, and it's got a hyphen and then it's sewing support group so you can search for that on Facebook and then that's a way that you can um, we can have a, a slightly easier two-way conversation um, and I do provide help and support on Facebook for for all of my sewing style projects it just it's just a bit more two-way than YouTube can be on its own so we've talked about the pattern, we've talked about the design, we've talked about um, the fabrics, we've talked about prepping your fabric, make sure that's washed and dried. And I always wash and dry all of my dressmaking fabric as soon as I've bought it before it comes into my sewing room. The only exception is if it's a silk or it's a dry clean only, then obviously I won't um, do that because that will be laundered differently. You'll need to take that to a dry cleaning place in order to, to launder that one. But anything that I can wash at home will get washed at home in, in terms of that fabric piece whilst it's all in, in one piece and dried, as I say, and then steam ironed flat. I don't fold, stick, fold a, um, don't iron a crease in the, in the centre of it, just fold it as one, just one flat piece. Iron it as one flat piece is what I meant to say. Um, and then we've talked about taking your measurements and then we've talked about how to choose your size on the pattern and then we've talked about working with the PDF pattern in order to then choose your size that you need to trace. So all of that will be, it'll sound new now because you're a beginner, but as we work our way through the different dresses and I'm going to be making some other dresses, some cashmere and what have you as well, it'll all start to fall in place. So don't try and remember it and think you've got to know it all straight away. So long as you know the high bust measurement exists and so long as you know that there's a difference between fabric with a, that's woven, non-stretch, and between fabric that has a stretch to it because that will affect the fit of your garments. So it's just trying to impart some knowledge onto you and I'm, hoping, I'm desperately hoping I'm not confused you and I'll find out when I rewind this back in order to edit it and see where we are. Um, and if I need to re-record re, re, um, re any bits, then I, I will do that for you um, in order to make this as simple as possible. But you've earned your cup of tea or coffee or water, you've earned your biscuit <laughs> or your apple or whatever else you want. Take just a breather, just let all of that just sink in and process, but then get your pattern pinned out and choose your pattern size. If you need any help with that, I can help. And then get your pieces, pattern pieces traced off 
because the next thing then we're going to be doing is working with something called a toile and we're going to toile this band here to make sure that fits before we then move on to anything else. Okay, that's me, over and out for now. And if you do want to watch the, the following parts of this, hopefully you do, then please consider subscribing to my channel because I'd really appreciate that and it's lovely to know that you're here um, and then you can um, be a part of my, my team, my group. Okay, enough from me. I'm off. See you later. Bye.